Smart objects have been in Photoshop for quite a while now, and they really help transform the way that we work within Photoshop. A smart object basically is a container, and anything can be converted into or placed inside a smart object. Well, not anything, but a lot of things can. Our images can, our layers can. We can also bring in external files, such as Illustrator files, that remain as vectors. We can also bring in raw files, so whatever objects we want to work with within Photoshop, if we put them inside a smart object, they retain their original properties and it also gives us flexibility when it comes to moving and scaling without losing any quality. Plus, they're completely non-destructive, so we can apply smart filters to them, which gives us re-editable filters. So rather than go ahead and give you all this theory, why don't we start working within smart objects and see what they do. So before we go to this image, which I'm going to use to demonstrate a number of different things, I'll show you how to get a raw image into Photoshop as a smart object. So we're just going to go to Bridge right now, and here we have a photograph, and it's a raw file. So I can just double click, and this will open it inside of Camera Raw. Now, if this was a JPEG or a TIFF, or it'd have to be an RGB TIFF, I could right click on that and I could choose Open in Camera Raw. Now, I can also do the same thing from Lightroom. I can actually bring it in to Photoshop as you just open it as a raw file or as a smart object within Photoshop. And I'll show you how to do the settings here right now in Camera Raw. Just click on here. And we have the option here to open in Photoshop as a smart object. So what I'm going to do here, because I've changed all the sizes and everything, I'm just going to reset this to its original size. And I'll probably go 16-bit for channel. So now, here we go. We're going to open this as a smart object. Click OK. And now, rather than opening it in Photoshop now, we can open it as a smart object. So we just click Open Object. And now it brings it into Photoshop. Looks like any other photograph. However, you'll see right here now there's this little icon. And this little icon tells us that we're working with a smart object. And let me increase the size of this here. We're just going to go to the panel options here. And I'll make this thumbnail a little bigger so you can really see what's going on. So at any time now, I can double click on this and it will take me back into Camera Raw where I can make settings. So we want to warm this photograph up a little bit. Maybe open up the shadows. Give it a little more contrast. Play around with the exposure, drop it around a little bit, maybe set a nice white point and a black point. Give it a little clarity, maybe punch up the vibrance just slightly. Okay, so we've made a couple of little changes to the photograph before and after, and now we click OK. And watch what happens right here within Photoshop. This updates it. Now, if I try to paint within here, notice I cannot paint. That's because it is a smart object. I can't do any pixel altering. However, what I can do is I can apply filters. I can apply layer styles. So if we want to work with these, we can. So say I want to do a gradient overlay. I could do that. Maybe we want to create a uh, just a little bit of a, a vignette kind of effect. See how I could do that very easily. And you can see what's going to happen to the photograph. You can actually see it as I work on it. We can change the scale here. I could double click this gradient to edit it. Let's make this a solid 100% um, there, make that solid black. And we could play around with the different settings here. We could uh, bring this down, change the location. I should just take that away. All right, so we can you kind of get to see what, what we're doing with this, just some different type of uh, playing around. We turn the opacity up a little bit here. There we go. And I click OK. And now I can set this to the bottom if I wanted, or to the top. Usually that's kind of like a split neutral density effect. Change the scale, click OK. And let's go down and have a look. So what we're doing really is we're just working right now for layer style. So I could double click on that effect. I don't like it's too much. We could change the opacity. The image is not going to be good. But if we change the, um, the opacity of the effect, let's go down to our gradient here. And we can turn the opacity down and just give it a little bit of a vignette effect. So you can see we could easily do that working with layer styles. What else can we do in here? We can apply filters. 
Let's try a filter, a blur filter. Let's go to a Gaussian blur right now. And if I want to blur my photograph, you know, I can do that. Click OK. Now, why do I want to do it that way? Well, because I can go in here under these settings and open up these settings and I can change the blend mode, say, to overlay. And see, when I do that, now I can get this really interesting effect. Play, Change the opacity. And see the kind of control we have now because I'm working with a smart object. I've got these smart filters. So I can go back and turn these off and on. They're completely re-editable. Now, if I did want to paint on here, what I'd have to do is I'd have to right-click here, and I would have to convert this. I would choose Rasterize Layer. This converts it to a regular layer. Now, I've done that. I can paint if I want. I could grab my paint tools, and I could begin to paint within there. Um, now, the filter has been applied. I can't go back and change that filter effect anymore. I can change the layer styles because these were still non-editable, uh, re-editable layer styles. So we can play around with these whenever we want. So we have these, these different options. So anyway, that's basically how that works. So that, that's a smart object and that's some of the advantages of working in them. So let me just close that out. We don't need to work in that anymore. Let's look at some other advantages here of working with a smart object. So here we go. We've got a photograph of a plane here. Let me duplicate this layer. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to hide the layer here, and I'm going to scale this. I'm just going to hit Control T for free transform, and I'm going to scale this all the way down. Hit Enter. Now I'm going to scale it back up. Control T, Command T on Mac. Hit Enter. Notice how soft it's become compared to the original. That's because we've been changing the pixels. We interpolated the pixels when we shrunk it, and then we interpolated them again when we enlarged it. So if you start playing around with these and scaling and rotating and doing too much, you start to degrade the quality of your image. Let me duplicate this one more time. I'm going to hide that layer, hide the top layer, and this time I'm going to convert it to a smart object. By right-clicking, choose Convert to Smart Object. See the little icon indicates it's a smart object. Let's control T. Let's shrink this all the way down. Apply it. Now we're going to hit control T again and bring it up. Remember how bad the other photograph looked? Enter. And now we compare it with the original. And obviously with that, notice where we haven't lost any quality. So that's a great thing about that. Let me delete these. And the reason is because this photograph now is not even in the photo or in this composition anymore. What it is actually doing is sitting inside a smart object. And if you want to edit this directly, you can't do it here. Remember I said we can't paint on it here. Well, let me show you something. Let's duplicate the smart object. And we're going to duplicate it again. And so now we've got three copies of this smart object. Now, all of these are linked to the same photo, so we're not actually adding any file size to this right now. Now, if we want to paint on this, let's double-click and go to the original object. So as we do that, notice that we're showing here, and it's a PSB, which is a Photoshop big, and we're here. So why don't we duplicate this layer here, and I'm going to do a hue saturation adjustment to it. Image, adjustments, hue saturation. So we go here. And let's just select on the yellow here with our eyedropper there. Um, let's change it from master here. We'll go to yellows. Click there. Select that. And now we just change the hue to a blue. So what I did again to do that is I just changed it from master to a color. And then the eyedropper sampled the color. Then I changed the color. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to close this out. Save it. Yes, please. And notice it updates all three of these smart objects. So all of these smart objects are linked to the same photograph. So you can see uh, the power that we have of working with these smart objects. So if I want to take them back, I go in here. Let's trash that layer. And it's just going to and hit Save. And there we go. We go back again. So there's a lot of different things you can do with smart objects. And as I mentioned before, when you bring things in and you choose to place, like a vector, if you choose to place an Illustrator file rather than embed it,
It will remain as a smart object. You can double click, go back to Illustrator. You can rotate, you can change things, you can edit it, you can edit the originals. So at any time, as you can see here, we can go and we can edit these originals and these will be reflected within these smart objects. And the thing is, if we want to apply a filter to just one of them here, we could. We could choose a filter blur and let's do a motion blur. And see, we've now applied a motion blur just to one of them. And that's because we didn't edit the original, we ad added a filter. And that smart filter stays with that object. And you can see that, that there's our filter there. And we can move it if we want. Notice I just clicked and dragged that. And I can move it between the layers and it affects the different layers. So that's another thing that you can do there. It's kind of interesting. And if you hit the Alt key or the Option key, you can duplicate that smart filter and notice that that smart filter is now on two of the airplanes and not the other one because I held the out or the option and just dragged it and of course at any time we can trash it just by clicking it open it up click it drag it to the trash can and that removes the smart filter so you can see that smart objects are just a tremendously great way to work they offer a lot of flexibility and particularly when you're working with photographs they're just really really wonderful